Hi, I am Andrea Klim, and you are watching Turn to the Stars. And today is August 8th that I'm recording this broadcast for YouTube. And um, today's a very important day, and that was why I picked today to uh, talk about um, some really important planetary influences that are happening. And we are really, truly in a cosmically active uh, period of real change and everybody on the planet is feeling it emotionally especially i you know i just finished doing a reading for someone up in uh new hampshire that is um sensi sensitively feeling this and it's really playing out in their bodies and this is happening to a lot of a lot of people we're feeling this physically emotionally is affecting us right to our core, the things that are emotionally arising for us, especially that lunar eclipse that we just had um, on Friday the 27th. That lunar eclipse was um, right next to the south node, meaning things from the past are rising up emotionally. And Mars, eh, right next to it, would influence us to um, really actively address and scrutinize and and plan and strategize, uh, communicate about these things from the past that that are uh, coming up to be um, realized and, and discussed. So, but today, August eighth, uh, is an important day because Mercury is currently in its retrograde right now. And Mercury, what that means to the layman out there, and I and I hope that I'm always conveying to you the language of the planets and how it can help you because that's the most important thing about you know to me to during this broadcast to reach you in a way that provides you with tools with answers because the world around us is the planets and the and how they affect us is very much equal to the world inside of us we are very much a carbon copy of our solar system. So anyway, today Mercury is in its retrograde process, but it is at its turning point. Whenever Mercury comes together with the sun, which it is today in the sign of Leo, it is a turning point. It's a time where we are mentally and mentally saying, aha, the light is on, the sun next to it puts the light on our minds, and we are going, aha, I get why it was so important for me to take my time in what, what area of our lives that we are concentrated on making decisions or um, researching. I, I know for me, it's very much about relationships and any type of contractual relationship. I'm really taking my time during this Mercury retrograde, researching, you know, how that light can shine for everybody, how we can all work together and partner in a way that helps each other. So that's the most important thing is that peace and that harmony and that fairness. So Today is that day, August 8th, and what we're heading toward at the end of this week is a, to um, I'm sorry, a partial solar eclipse in the sign of Leo, and Mercury's going to be right next to it. So there is going to be a lot that will change about, you know, our own personal identity. This is sort of what a lot of astrologers are calling a cosmic reset. And um, a solar eclipse is truly about our identity. Who am I? How do I shine? How am I recognized? Especially in the sign of Leo. And, um, and with the North Node, with this eclipse in Leo also, it, there's this tendency that we can be overly ambitious, overly zealous, overly expressive, overly bright because... Leo is ruled by the sun, and the sun wants to shine. And so whatever area of your chart is being eclipsed or where changes are, are coming in to your life, you know, there's, this, there's these areas of the chart which I can show you. 
Um, let's see here how I can put that so you can best see it. Um, every one of these areas with the lines are what we call houses, and they're areas of our lives that are being affected by change. So, for instance, this eclipse is in this universal chart is over in the second house, and the second house of this astrology chart, of any astrology chart, is about security. It's about the things we own. It's about our sense of security. It's about feeling secure. It's about our belongings, our money, um, our values. And with this eclipse occurring, where it's occurring in this chart, it's indicating to us that our sense of security in some way is going to change and how we express our, our sense of security is going to change. Um, the way we think about security is going to change. And there's some very difficult aspects to this eclipse. Aspects meaning that, you know, um, the planet Jupiter is having a challenging conversation with this eclipse. And so Jupiter is about expansion, and it's in the sign of Scorpio. And Scorpio is the one sign of the zodiac that is all about transmutation, all about transformation, all about examining areas where we need or where transformation is going to happen in an expanded way. And so this eclipse, this solar eclipse squaring Jupiter is saying that we are having some difficulty in this area and we're having some difficulty on expanding, um, on accepting these areas of change. And um, that's going to be sort of a theme uh, moving forward and, or an area that is under the microscope where change is occurring. And so we have to let go or find ways, find tools, find avenues or help from others in that process so that we can move through this period of change with more grace and ease. And Venus, you know, just this week moved into the sign of Libra. Venus is the love or the glue that binds us together. It is the power of attraction. It's where, you know, um, it's our relationships. It's our value systems. And because it's in opposition to Chiron, it indicates that we need other people in our lives in order to heal ourselves. We, other people need us in order to heal themselves. And so there's that conversation that goes on. And one of the things that I really love about this solar eclipse chart is that there is something called angel wings, which is showing up between Mars retrograde in the seventh house, which is relationships, partnerships, and it's sextile to Chiron. So it's like there's a... There's some relief and there's some ability that is present universally for us to heal, for our communities to heal. And, and also, though, for our communities to see where the pain is. And, you know, it's interesting because Chiron is in the ninth house of this um, eclipse chart. And Chiron is the wounded, wounded healer. So where there's, a pain, where there's pain or where there's a wound is with us, with ourselves, in our justice systems, in our legal systems, in our out there in the, you know, in the uh, the laws, in in the areas of laws, and so we really need to have these conversations um, in our relationships, in how we relate to other people. We need to have these conversations about healing, understand where the wound or the pain is and have these conversations together, what we can do to change or to connect or to get closer together in order to resolve these problems in, and communicate about them because Venus is in the third house here. So um, interesting thing that happened just today also um, is... Actually, I believe this was yesterday that Uranus turned retrograde. And 
Um, Uranus is the planet of surprise and the most unusual, the most different. It's invention. It's also freedom. It brings us the um, brings up the 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 uh, discussion about freedom or the feelings of being free or independent. And so wherever Uranus is in your chart transiting, and, and it's in the sign of Taurus now, which is, it happened, it, that occurred back on May 15th. And that means that our, our resources are changing in the world. Our financial systems are changing. And we are just getting into that piece where we're starting to realize that there's something different that needs to be done. And, you know, Uranus can be very erratic activity also, and we've seen that in out in the financial world. Uh, we've seen it with Facebook. We've seen it with the stock exchange. So um, with Uranus turning retrograde, what it's going to do, it's going to sort of help us to get out the bottled up things that, have made us feel insecure, get them out in the world. So basically, as Uranus has been moving forward over the course of the last um, six, seven months, now between now and January, it's going to be retrograde. So we're going to have that retracing, revisiting thing that goes on in the areas of where we're free, in the areas of what we've been holding inside and scared to let out or to rebel about or to um, say what our idea is about it. Um, I heard something this morning that um, I thought was interesting, and it was um, people right now are making the changes inwardly to adjust to what has changed outwardly. And that's really important. Whatever was not expressed outwardly, now we're kind of revisiting that and expressing it in our own unique way. That's the most important thing. Um, and, and so it's good to know where Uranus is in your chart, how it's aspecting the planets in your chart. It's at two degrees of Taurus right now. So the, um, you know, people who are Taurus, people who have um, Scorpio energy, Leo energy, uh, Aquarius energy are all going to feel this shift, this change, this, um, this inner um, type of manifestation bringing things out. And especially with Mars retrograde, Mars has been retrograde since... Um, I believe it started at on uh, June 26th, and it's going to be in that backward motion until August 27th. So it's, it sort of slows us down in our forward movement, so it's a really introspective time, a time for self-examination, really examination of areas of our life that we've been angry, areas that we've felt like, we're not connected. Um, areas that make us feel like, um, it's not make us feel, that it's areas that where things from the past are coming up that we have not found a way to resolve. So Mars going backward is giving us that inner introspection, that inner um, conversation. So anyway, I... Uh, I did want to share just that little bit of piece, that piece of uh, astrology information, because really we're closing this eclipse portal with this new seed, this new, you know, this partial solar eclipse um, that is occurring on Saturday. And, you know, we're not going to be able to see that partial solar eclipse here. Um, I'm in Florida, but Ocala... Um, is um, where they're saying that um, there is, this starts at 4.02 a.m. and ends at 7.30 a.m. 
and um, this partial solar eclipse can be seen over northeast Europe, northwest Asia, and the northern part of North America, the Atlantic, and the Arctic. So um, it's about a three and a half hour eclipse, but the, the period of the eclipse is a lot shorter than that. This is just from the very beginning when it starts till it's completely over. And again, in the sign of Leo, the lion-hearted, the expressive, the fun lover, the game player, the, um, the creative artist, within each and every one of us. It's about recognition. It's about being noticed. So the only thing that I would say is that with the North Node in Leo also, it's triggering us to recognize and realize that we need to take a new path. And we need to try to regulate um, this new path. We need to figure out how we can have some balance in that and not be overzealous. Um, break away from stuff where things are overdone. And it is also about acceptance of change. Over the course of the next six months, wherever this eclipse occurred in your chart is going to be where the seed is planted, where something new is starting, where something is ending. And so it's a really, really potent time cosmically right now for everyone. So if you're feeling this energy, if you're feeling some heaviness, it means that you're feeling exactly what is happening with the, with the planets. The, uh, you're, you're in tune with the world around you. So it's really important that you do what you can to stay on track. And so I want to tell you about a couple things that I'm doing um, this Friday and every Friday moving forward. I am doing readings, astrology readings that are spiritually insightful at Every Nook and Cranny, which is here in Mount Dora, located at 334 North Donnelly Street between 12 and 5. And you can either schedule the appointment or you can walk in and hopefully I can see you if you uh, have that type of schedule. And, and I'd love to meet you all. And uh, so that's at Every Nook and Cranny. Uh, Caitlin with Caitlin and Mabry and Sonia that are there every day. Um, so that's a great way to kind of get an understanding of where these Changes are really influencing you in your life. So that's readings on Saturday, I mean Friday. And then Saturday, if you're close to Orlando, um, I've been invited to a beautiful art gallery called Massimo Art Gallery. And that's on International Drive in Orlando. And I'm going to be doing astrology and spiritually insightful readings there from 10 to 2. So for any of these things, these um, uh, areas that I'm going to be, if you wanted to give me a call, um, schedule an appointment, or just drop by and even just come and see the, uh, the art gallery. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mo has done a great job with it, and it's, it's a new gallery, so there's a lot of very unique, beautiful, beautiful stuff there. And the other thing that I want to tell you about, which is, a really great life tool. I'm going to be teaching Astrology 101 at Every Nook and Cranny starting on September 11th. I've got a 10 week um, class, uh, 10 weeks of classes set up for Introduction to Astrology 101. And that class is something that I've taught for a very, very long time. And I've actually written a book that I use for this teaching. I have not published this book yet. That is something that is on my next, the next thing um, of in my uh, on my to-do list to, to edit it and get it in a way that it's perfected so that I can publish it. But anyway, the most important thing is astrology classes and group to take those classes in a group setting is is really a great, great experience. I've been doing it for a long, long time. 
Um, I taught up in New England and um, New Hampshire in the dairy adult education program for over four years and had some really great um, students there. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all. I hope you, you know, um, will take a look at or even just try the class. Um, I think that there's a lot that anyone can learn, especially young adults. I love having young adults in my class. So um, any questions, please let me know. I'm at I'm Andrea at turntothestars.com, or you can reach me at 603-490-6253. And I hope that you be well during this cosmically active period this summer. Stay well. And take good care of yourself. And remember, turn to the stars and you'll find your answers there. 